It's so exhausting waking up every day to the same ringing. The voice in your head telling you just five more minutes. The inner dilemma we have between our bed sheets as the rain outside trickles down the window. What if we could just fight that feeling with a simple rule? A countdown of five, four, three, two, I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left all my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone in progression, it's all that I wanted. A bow in affection, I summon it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I'm a designer and filmmaker. I upload videos to YouTube about my filmmaking and also my design practice. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please do subscribe. So the video you watched at the beginning was a little short film I made for Nike. It's not anything to do with them. They didn't ask me, they didn't pay me. I bought those shoes. I just wanted to try something different. And you've got to test yourself sometimes and you give yourself these little briefs. So this was all on my own back, no association with anyone, just me. Now, when I first ever get an idea for a video, I sit down with my laptop, hit record and film myself talking about the video idea. This came from a fellow filmmaker on YouTube called Hey X Natalie. Natalie? Natalie? I've forgotten her name, I'm so sorry. Eek. She does this and it's just a good way of just getting your initial thoughts out and like, not onto paper, but just visualize because sometimes when you're trying to write down your thoughts, it can be really hard. Okay, so I have an idea. So I start off the process with talking to myself, filming myself, go through the idea, and then I translate it into notes and type up all my kind of ideas and the structure that the video may have. Now in that initial like video note to myself, I said I didn't want to overcomplicate the story. I wanted it to be a super simple story. I didn't want it to seem super thought out and different. It was the first idea that came to my head. It's a common story a lot of people will associate to. The whole, oh, getting out of bed is like the hardest thing in the world. Ugh, exercise, who wants to do that? So many people associate with those feelings and so many people feel those feelings. So to make it as simple and as generic as possible was kind of the strive for that video. I didn't have to overcomplicate it to get the same message across, if that makes sense. I also chose to marry up the whole getting out of bed idea from Mel Robbins' book. Like the reason she started doing the five second rule was because she was struggling to get up in the morning. Not necessarily an issue I suffer from, but it's more like I was stuck in a rut and I just felt like I needed something to kickstart me again. And this video was also to kickstart me in terms of filmmaking again. I really wanted something to just be like, you need to just do it. You just need to get up and do it. You just need to grab that camera and do it. That's what this film was for me. And that's what kind of started the process and the idea churning in my head. So now that I had the storyline pretty much like nailed in my head, I decided I needed to storyboard it. And I don't normally storyboard videos. In fact, this is like my second time storyboarding a video, but this time I had a bit more of a clear idea of what the storyline was. So it made the storyboarding process so much easier. So I did some rough sketches of the storyboarding, basically just of the first scene. When I got to the point where I was bringing in the product, the shoes, I kind of started to hit like a wall. That's when I turned to researching what other people were doing. I hadn't researched anything at this point. I hadn't looked at anyone else's videos. I just kind of gone from what had come from my mind. And then once I started to struggle, leaned on that crutch of research. I turned to YouTube for my little deep dive because I believe in following other YouTube filmmakers. I like watching YouTubers and seeing what they can achieve in their setups and translating that into what I can do. After watching a few YouTube videos, I noticed a lot of them didn't have a storyline. A lot of them had just dived into filming the product and just making edgy B-roll shots. And I'm guilty of doing that in the past, believe me, like that is how I would have just gone for a video. But now, 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 now? But now knowing that story is really important and can help entice people in, I feel like I was on the right path doing it the way that I did and thinking of what the story was gonna be before I even thought about how I was gonna film and edit it. I really wanted to try and flex these extra skills that I haven't really utilized in my 
film career path thus far. <laughs> so after doing some research, I kind of decided I wasn't gonna storyboard the last part of the video, the video of the product. I was just gonna wait and see what happened in the moment. Just film whatever I felt would work. Okay, so now that we've storyboarded and we've got our idea ready, um, literally the same day as storyboarding, I then filmed the video. What? I was working on a really tight schedule and I kind of did this for a reason because I knew if I didn't give myself a tight schedule, I would flail about and just not do it and just put it off. I had to do it in the time that Mark was at work. So I guess I'll break it down into scene by scene and I filmed the first scene, in the bedroom scene, first. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. I knew what shots I wanted because I'd already done it in the storyboard. I knew I wanted a side shot, an overhead shot and some handheld footage just to shake things up a little bit. <laughs> Literally shake things up. Because I already had done my storyboard, I found it really easy to set up these shots and to, to know what I wanted in each of them. The, the side shot was the easiest. I had to do one take and I was good. The overhead shot <laughs> um, as you can actually see here, I have this shelving unit in my office that um, it's like one of those standard IKEA shelving units. I thought that would be a good idea to use as, um, for my overhead shot because I don't have any fancy like arms or C stands or any of that stuff. I don't have that shit. So I decided to tape my light stand to the top of the IKEA shelf and then have the camera on the end of that tripod light stand. It wasn't a good setup. I don't I don't condone it. I'm just saying if you guys are struggling for overhead shots, get creative. I did and it kinda works. <laughs> um the issue I had with this is that I had to put my legs inside the shelving unit and then my legs had to like hold down the whole unit and it was moving and then the camera would be moving and I had to move to do my action. It was a hot mess and it wasn't good like I, I wish I could figure out a better way to do an overhead setup but I literally gave myself like half an hour to get that filmed so <laughs> I'm gonna give myself some credit that was interesting ingenious if you will innovative I'm okay with the result it worked <laughs> it did it in, in terms of storytelling it did what it had to do the only issue I think I really had was I only used my one led little light thing um, I have a set of two LED lights I got off Amazon for like 50 quid and they're all right. They're battery powered. They fit in the office perfectly. They do a great job in here because there's no window light. But for that setup, it wasn't great because I still wanted to emulate that it was morning and I wanted it to be dark. I couldn't really think of another way to set up the lights to make it a bit brighter because again, I didn't really utilize the camera settings for filming in low light. I was using the Sony A6300. I do not know how to use that camera. Um, I'm borrowing it from Snap, a film company in Aberdeen, to help me learn how to color grade and use 4K footage. It was it was great like getting to use that camera, but I just I feel like I need to research it a little bit more to understand which settings would have been best in that scenario, because I kind of did just jump into it. As much as I planned the story and the shots, I didn't plan my settings or anything like that. For next time, I'll be on it. <laughs> the next setup, um, scene, scenario, whatever you want to call it, was the door scene and it was only there for like a split second but I really liked the, the shot in terms of like how I had to hold the camera in one hand and then move the door with the other. <laughs> I did it maybe like two or three times and then I got super anxious because I have neighbours and I didn't want them to think that I was just like slamming the door shut like constantly like I'm sorry but it looked really cool I'm really happy with how that one turned out I wish I'd been a little bit more in focus on the actual box but shit happens that's fine then we go to our third setup which was the tabletop setup and I'm so happy with how that one turned out like that's my favorite part of the entire video obviously it's the most fun part of the video where all the editing happens and the cool angles and the snazzy shots, like that's the fun part. But yeah, I'm super happy with how that turned out. For the setup, I'd seen a lot of people on YouTube using their glass tables for the reflections and stuff and it just looked so good, but they always had something black underneath it to kind of just like extra heighten the, the reflection. I didn't have time to like nip to Hobbycraft or anything like that to pick up some A1 paper. So I was like, maybe if I use like this black throw underneath it, it'll work. No, <laughs> did not work. I then decided to resort to bin bags. 
it worked really well. It was lightweight enough that the, the like the the sellotape could hold it up and it gave this nice like rippled effect on the glass that just kind of gave the mirrored look a really nice interesting texture that I wasn't expecting. So yeah, bin bags. Who knew? Yeah, then I just played about with filming. I just like used it handheld or on the table surface. I didn't do any fancy gimbals or anything like that. Again, I only use one light. I kind of wish I'd spent more time on the lighting. I did this all in like 10, five minutes, I swear to God, because Mark came home and I was just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but if I'd had more time, I would have set up some lights so I could have had like teal and an orange light to match up with like the editing and the box. Not because teal and orange lights are like super popular guys, but because I think it would have matched up like the orange box with some blue light. I do want to experiment more with color grades and stuff like that. So if I'd given myself a bit more color to play with, I think it could have been a really punchy looking edit. And in terms of like the overall like edit, I added in some like glitchiness to it because I personally love a glitchy edit, kind of like an editorial, punchy, sporty vibe. It's very in right now with fashion brands and I just love glitchy edits, like that's my jam. I did a bit of that, I added in like that nice bright kind of teal cyan-y colour, added in some of that kind of cool colours. I did do an RGB split but I took out the R because I didn't like having the red in there, I was just like nah. Yeah, I kind of try to find music that fits the vibe of the overall video, I use Epidemic Sound, this track worked perfectly. There was actually an extra verse in it where he just repeats the same couple of lyrics and it isn't as punchy so I just cut that out and crossfaded it in and I was like that sounds good nobody will know. Now you guys know I'm sorry I'm a wizard I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah um I did that and added in some rain effects at the beginning and the voiceover the voiceover was actually recorded on my iPhone I would pick it up right now to show you but it's also recording this voiceover one of my friends will at snap actually asked me like holy shit dude what microphone do you use I'm like my iPhone <laughs> super underrated microphone if you guys are looking for a like an, a, if you have a phone just use it like it's way better than camera audio <laughs> Only kind of other editing things I did was adding in some keyframe scales at the beginning to kind of just change up the movement. You know sometimes when you've got static tripod shots they can be a bit stale, you just want to add a little bit of movement, just keyframe the scale a little bit, it's fine. And again I cropped in on some of those shots so they just felt a little bit different so they weren't so repetitive because I only had like two shots really to cut between. Overall I am happy with that video but I will be entirely honest with you guys. I need to learn a lot more about filmmaking. I need to learn so much more about filmmaking. Like I made that super quick and I'm super happy with it but like I know there's flaws in it like 100%. I'm just using this as a way to experiment and to trial out new things and it's a way for me to kind of open up and ask you guys for feedback. You know, it's, it's easy to share work that you're super proud of and you think is perfect, but it's even harder to share work that you, you know, there's faults in and that you know people are gonna pick on and be like, that clip's a little bit noisy though, isn't it? And I'm just like, oh, I know, but I didn't know what to do. So <laughs> I'm totally open for feedback. Please give constructive feedback. Don't just say it looks shit because that will hurt my feelings. I'm still a human being but I am totally up for constructive criticism and feedback and all that jazz. So if you guys have any thoughts on the video that I edited or even this video I recorded, that would be amazing. Leave them in the comments below. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this, do subscribe. I plan on making a ton of more videos like this. I really enjoyed filming that little Nike promo video thing and also the BTS of it. And I think that's everything guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys will stick around. Your support means the world to me. I, I've honestly tried so hard at this YouTube game. It's been a tough one and I'm trying to diversify and you know come up with new ideas and try new things and this is a direction I kind of want to push more now. Um, a lot of you might be here because I'm a designer and don't worry, I am still a designer, but I do really enjoy filmmaking and I do want to push into that a little bit more. There might be a time when the design and the film cross over and I make something super cool, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means the world to me and I will see you guys again real soon in the next video. Bye guys.